I'm Jimmy Vegas, and this is How to Make an RPG in Unity, and welcome to episode 26. So this time, we're going to carry on and finally finish up this massive quest that we've got going on. Well, I say massive, it feels like it's been going on for a while because we've had so many things to piece together and get working. And this is going to be the episode where we finally have it all come together and test what we have from start to finish. So there's going to be a couple of things that we'll need to do to get this bit more you know, quest-like. So if you remember, uh, I had a bit of trouble with this uh, exit gate. So first things first, I'm going to turn off the open gate. I'm then going to turn off the boss spider and I'm going to turn off the uh, spider enemy. So they only become active at a certain point during the game. Uh, same with this sword, we're going to turn this elven sword off because we don't actually need it on right now. Now, what we'll do is the idea of everything up to this point is we've got the sword, we've got it from this board, we've got the sword, we come back to this NPC right here. And this NPC then gives us the quest. So after this, we then need to activate the next part of the quest via this NPC. So let's go into the NPC 001 script. So we'll open it up in Visual Studio. And what we'll do is amongst all this, we'll add in another game object. So public game object, and we'll call this gate open semicolon. So the idea is that once we've spoken to uh, the NPC, so in this case, it's saying we have a spider problem. Can you go outside the village, kill the spiders and their boss? Here is the key. After that, we will set that gate object as active. So gate open dot set active and in brackets true. So that's that part complete. So let's save that script and update what we have here. So just wait for it to think about it and it will add the variable here. There we go. So now the gate open object goes over here. So we've got that sequence in position, which means now we go to the gate open object, open up that script, and at this point we have to set those two spiders as active. So we add those to the... Oh, it's having a bit of a thing there. So we add those two spiders to the script itself when it's actually loaded. There we go. So public game object and we'll have small spider and then we'll have public game object uh, boss spider semicolon. So once we've opened the gate it's at that point we'll set those two enemies as active. So small spider dot set active true semicolon and boss spider dot set active true semicolon and save and then let's set those into position so wait for unity to have a think about it and then set those two variables so boss spider into there and spider enemy into small spider so we've now got to the point where these two enemies have appeared and the idea is on the boss spider we then need to create another variable which will say yes okay we've killed this boss we can carry on so the finished quest becomes active after killing the spider boss so if we go into a spider boss enemy right here <coughs> excuse me and once again it's having a little bit of a think computer's on a bit of a go slow today it would seem so the idea is we're going to add to the subquest number in the quest manager script to say uh, this is the fourth part. So death spider, yep, once he's died, after all is said and done, what we'll do, we will add, it should be quest manager. Yep, that's right, because it's highlighted it here just for us. So quest manager dot sub quest number equals four semicolon and save 
So that's that section done. It'll recognize that this part of the quest, we've killed the boss spider. So then that means that the second NPC, in this case, we don't actually have one yet, but we're going to create that one now. And it'll then get to a point where we can say, yep, we'll do that. So let's hold control, press D on our NPC 001. In fact, yeah, we will. We'll take the same NPC. So we'll hold control, press D on the NPC. And I'm going to rename this to NPC 001 underscore comp, just short for complete. And I'm going to drag it up the hierarchy and place it just above, which means we then have to replace on our boss spider down here, new NPC is NPC 001 comp. So then that means that finally this NPC 001 comp, which we will set as inactive pretty soon, we're going to modify this NPC 001 script. So take this NPC 001 script, hold control, press D, and it'll rename it, but we want to F2 and re-rename it to NPC 001 underscore comp. So because we've altered the name of the script, hopefully you guys are ahead of me on this one. When we open the script up in Visual Studio, it means that we are going to have to change the class name. Because if you remember, it has to be the same as a script name. So if we go here, underscore com, it'll get rid of any errors. Now the general idea what we're going to do here is keep the script relatively the same. And by default, we're going to say this right here. So instead of, hello friend, may I have a, a quest for you, go back later this afternoon. What it means is when this becomes active, we're going to say, um, let's just have, in fact, we'll do this in reverse order, I think. So we'll start here with the quest manager active quest number equals two. So we're going to change this and have, because uh, by default it still is number two. We'll have ampersand, two ampersands because we're doing and. And we'll have quest manager dot sub quest number equals four. So what we're saying here is that if we're still in this quest that it has been given to us, and the subquest part is equal to four, then we say thank, thank you very much for your help. There is a cave outside the village. Please go explore. Something very simple like that. And because we're doing this, what we get to do is turn off this gate open. We don't actually need that anymore, but we're going to leave a space here and put some annotations and we'll have cave object set here. And it also means that we can get rid of this gate open variable up here. So at this point, what we're going to do is set active quest number to three and subquest equals to one. So we're reverting everything back, ready for the third quest. And we'll do that right here. So quest manager dot active quest number equals three. I've gone down a the line there when I shouldn't. There we go. And quest manager dot sub quest number equals one semicolon and then the final thing to do is this is the generic wording which the npc will say after we've spoken to them with this and i'll just put please come and see me when you have explored the cave so something simple like that and let's save that script Head back to Unity and hopefully we should get rid of all errors. We do. Perfect. So this NPC001 complete then gets dragged onto the actual NPC complete. 
and we'll just set these uh, variables up again. So action character goes into there, action text into there, the player, uh, text box right there, NPC name, and NPC text. And then we can get rid of the original NPC001 script. And then finally, let's turn off up here that NPC001 comp. And let's save that scene. So with a bit of luck, we should have everything working just nicely. So if I remember, we have scene cam one as the main you know what? I'm trying to just remember how we get the um, cutscene going. Because. Uh, ba, ba, ba. I think we can disable that. Is that how this works? It's been quite a while since I've done this, to be honest. Um, okay, so I think that is it. So let's press play and try this whole sequence out. Hopefully, hopefully, guys, this goes down quite well. Okay, no cameras running. That I think that means we've got to turn on scene cam one. That's my fault. Okay, and here we go. Let's try this out. Uh, it's not quite working, is it? The music isn't playing because I forgot to turn it on. But that's that's not to worry. It's not to worry at all. So there's a couple of things I've noticed with this. So we'll probably have to modify the um, scene at some point. So let's start by getting our sword. And if we try talking to our NPC right here, I may have a quest for you. If you wish to accept it, please come back this afternoon. So we'll do just that. It looks like a bit of a bug there. So we'll go through a debugging session at some point. And I think I've just noticed the cutscene doesn't quite work again. I think because we have the fade in still active, but I'm sure we turn that off, you know. There we go. It's because I turned that off. That, sorry, that is a completely my fault. That's my fault, guys. So let's skip the cutscene. So we know that works now because we've fixed all that. Let's resave the scene. Let's get our first person controller going. In fact, my bad. I should actually put the first person controller in its actual starting position rather than all the way over there. Let's bring it over here. This is the fun part of, of uh, game development, the testing. So let's get down to business. Let's get all this going. Yep, I've uh, done something yet again, haven't I? Let's quickly check what have I done wrong. Why can I not click on the canvas? Does fade in stay on? I think it does, doesn't it? Yes, that's why. So this the that's right. The um the actual script to turn fade in, we've turned it off. So right. Now we can get down to business. So let's accept the quest. Yep, so far so good. <clears throat> we may need to block this portion off here, just ahead of us. Uh, another glitch, so we've got some water here to sort out. But that's not to worry for now. Let's take our sword. Excellent. Now let's hand this back in and collect some more health, ready for our little fight. Uh, I think we've got some hearts over here. Yep. So let's hand this in. Perfect. Now let's take the spider quest. Yep. Kill the spiders. Excellent. Okay, another bit of a bug there. So we'll need to sort that one out. Open gate. Spiders have appeared. Excellent. Uh, one dead. Let's get the big guy. Come here, you. 
And there we go. Got him. So another one there. We still need to sort out the freezing because he freezes in the wrong position. But there we are. We've killed him. And finally, let's finish this all off by handing this quest in to our NPC. So we'll need to sort out the arrow as well at some point. Thank you very much for your help. There is a cave outside the village. I've spelled village wrong. Please go explore. And there we go. Please come and see me when you've explored the cave. So let's quickly sort out that village. Resave. And that is that entire sequence done. A couple of bugs here and there. Feel free to kind of work on them if you want to, but we will get around to a little debugging session eventually. Uh, so next episode, we're going to take a break from development and we're going to create that main menu that I spoke of last episode, which is going to be relevant to the game. And that is going to be a lot of fun because I want to do a little bit of experimenting and see what we can kind of come up with. So guys, until that next episode, thank you very much for watching.